Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, the day's here, Isaac and Kayla. You did it. But, sorry to burst your bubble, it doesn't end here. But did you know, as I mentioned to the children, that Jesus prayed for you? that our Lord Jesus prayed for you. He really did. And he prayed for everyone gathered here. You see, Jesus, in the context of our gospel reading, was very concerned about telling as many people about what he had done and the change that it had affected between our relationship with God. Because he knows that he's about to endure the suffering and death of the cross and then, as was celebrated this past Thursday, ascend into heaven to prepare a place for us. But he goes to prepare a place for us because he sent out his disciples so that people like you and me and Isaac and Kayla can believe in him on account of their words. Because after all, Jesus did something that changed everything changed my life, and it changed yours. This and his many teachings about God, he wanted to be taken to the ends of the earth, to be heard by the most people possible. And so, in John 17, he prays to the Father for exactly that. He prayed for you. He prayed that you would hear about him and what he has done and know that what he has done has been done for you, that now in him you are forgiven, that now in him you are loved by God just as God loves Jesus, his perfect righteous son. Isaac and Kayla, Jesus prayed for you. Now, this is a fitting text for confirmation because it's perhaps one of the earliest descriptions of this tradition of the church, if you will, the passing on of the faith from one generation to the next, right? And as the kids so aptly put, the two main places you hear about Jesus are here at church and at home from your parents, and God intended it to be that way from the beginning. And so today we celebrate we celebrate that you are confirming that faith that has been told to you by the words of the apostles through the church and through your parents. Now, in his prayer, in our gospel reading, Jesus shares four reasons why this is his hope for you. This is his hope for all those who believe in him. The first there is in verse 21, that they may all be one. That was his prayer for the church, to be bound together in a spirit of unity. The second is that the world may believe that you have sent me. The third is that they also may be with me where I am. Jesus' desire is to be with you. And the fourth is that the love with which you have loved me may be in them. Jesus wanted you to have the same love of the Heavenly Father as He receives. So, Kayla and Isaac, congregation, did you know all that, that your faith was meant not just for you, but for your church and for the world as a witness to Jesus? But this passage can be difficult to make sense of. As we talked about with the kids, it just sounds like he's saying words at times, I and me and you and him and thee and we and all that good stuff. So we're going to break that down by looking at those four reasons. So first is the faith that makes us one in Christ. In faith, you became a part of the body of believers. Sometimes we call that the body of Christ. Because if you look at everybody around you that's gathered here this morning... All those in faith, you now share a bond with them, a bond of oneness. Now you have family granted to you here on earth that have brought, brought you into this life, 
as well as celebrate your achievements. They're gathered here today, but now that group is growing because now you are united in oneness and faith with Jesus. <laughs> so take a look around. Take a look around, the people next to you here. The thing that binds you together is your faith in Christ, that He has forgiven your sins and that now you will live forever with Him. In Jesus' prayer, we really learn that you all, Kayla and Isaac, we are all only one generation separated from the apostles. Now, I know literally we are many, many generations, but where did you hear the words but directly from the apostles written in the book? And that was what Christ prayed for, that through their words you would come to know about him. So now you are part of of a body of believers that stretches back millennia, united in your faith in Jesus. So, to emphasize that that's the reality, I would like the congregation to welcome our two confirmands by saying, we welcome you in the name of Jesus. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. You're part of us now. One in Christ. After all, Jesus prayed for you and said that he wanted you to believe that they may all be one. The next part is the faith that witnesses to the world. We are one in Christ so that our oneness can bear witness to the love, forgiveness, and grace of Jesus to the rest of the world. To carry on the plan that Jesus had, starting with his apostles, so that more and more people can hear of him, his wondrous love, the mighty deeds of renown that he accomplished, so that now we can be seen as sons and daughters of the king. You see, as followers of Christ, and you may have experienced this already, and you certainly will in the future, we are called to live a different sort of life. This is what we've been spending the last, well, normally it's two years, but because of COVID, it was a little bit longer. But that's what we've been learning, the Ten Commandments, the Creed, the Lord's Prayer, the life of prayer, the reception of the sacraments, all things that we as believers in Jesus obey, follow, and value that the world does not necessarily do. We make sacrifices in the name of Jesus. We don't just follow our own will and our own desire. We follow His to the best of our ability. There will be sacrifices in a life of faith. After all, the world has its own influence. It will want you to pursue after desires and dreams that may sound nice but ultimately harm you. And yet your Lord Christ prays for you that you live as he calls you, according to his teachings, according to the things you heard from the word of the apostles. And he's praying for this for you, not just for your own sake, but so that those who see and know you in the world will call and be pointed to him, that your faith is a witness about Jesus. That's why we gather here on Sunday, to be renewed in our faith, to hear God's word so that we can go out into the world and be that love and light he intends us to be. And now you're a part of that in a new way. You've been a part of that for a while, worshiping in our midst, but now you are taking a bit of your own ownership about how that plays out in your life. Next is the faith that is for you. Faith is a deeply personal gift given specifically to you. And this is the part we usually focus on and we get right. It's most often what we think of when we think of faith. The gift that it is for me. And it is indeed a wondrous gift. Jesus has given this gift to you. Believe it. And at times in your life, you may doubt whether God really loves you, whether what Jesus has done it was really, in fact, for you and not for people who seem to be able to do this Christian life thing better than you can. In those moments, I want you to remember your baptism. Remember your baptism because that was when God promised you. You specifically, he placed his name on you 
and called you his own, a forgiven child of God. And so you are. Here in John 17, we find out why he did that for you. It's his desire that you receive the love of the Father. The Bible tells us that we are once dead in our trespasses and sins, not recipients of the love of the Father, not recipients of the forgiveness of our Lord, but now, through Jesus, we are. That's his prayer for you today, that the love with which you have loved me may be in them. He's talking about you. That through Jesus, this special love, this unconditional love, a love that always forgives, will be yours. And I want you to remember that no matter the wrong. It's a love that always forgives. Because as you grow up, the world is a scary place at times. And it has a strong and powerful voice that can lead you astray. You may stray from your faith for a while. Many gathered here have done that. You may think that you've done something that can't be forgiven. But hear the prayer of your Lord Jesus today that that is not the case. The love with which you are loved now by God comes free of conditions, free of expectations, a gift of faith. You may always return here and receive it. You may always come back. And when you confess your sins, the one response you'll get is that they are forgiven because of what Jesus has done. His prayer for you is that you know and believe that that special, unconditional love from God is now yours in Jesus. And he doesn't just give you a word from long ago, but he continues to do it. He says that I have made his name, his name known to you, and I will continue to make it known. You're not left to your own devices. You've now been welcomed into the oneness of a community of believers where we gather around regularly to remind ourselves to hear this word of the apostles so that our faith in the promise of God's love and forgiveness is sustained. That's part of my job. That's part of your parents' job. That's part of your fellow believers' calling as followers of Christ is continually to remind one another and point one another to Jesus. Remember that support that you will find here always. And lastly, this faith is Jesus' desire for you. He wants you to have it because, and he says in here in his prayer, he wants you to be with him where he is. That's the great joy that we look forward to as Christians. That was the image presented in our Revelation reading, the kingdom of heaven, God's kingdom. He wants you to be there where He is. And His desire for you is so strong that He came to earth and died on the cross so that all your sins would be forgiven so that you could live forever with Him. Kayla and Isaac, remember this. Jesus has searched for you, and He has found you. Despite your sinfulness, and failure. He grants you faith, forgiveness of sins, and life eternal, not by any deed of your own, but by his own righteous action, his own unconditional love. And look around, each of us here who are gathered in the name of Jesus, we have learned and believed this truth. He, our Lord Jesus, is what binds us together. His forgiveness of our sins Yes, even your parents. His love, despite our unworthiness. Without Jesus, that's really all that binds us together, is that we're all sinful, we're all unworthy, but now we're bound together in Jesus, who has made us worthy, who has cleansed us of our sin, who has given us the love of the Heavenly Father. So Kayla and Isaac, you've been a part of this faith already, but today you're going to confirm it as your own. 
We're so happy to hear you say that. We're here to celebrate this joyous revelation, and continually we will welcome you here into the body of Christ. You're now part of the church in a new way. And my prayer for you is to echo our Lord's prayer for you, to please continue to come to the Lord's house and to His table, where you find all the things He wishes to give you. At His table, you'll find a body of believers made one in Jesus. At His table, you'll be a part of the church's witness to the world about His great love and sacrifice and the gift of eternal life. At His table, you will find a God who loves you so much that He sent Jesus to redeem you as a righteous child of God. So, Kayla and Isaac, we love you, and God loves you because of Jesus, and that binds us all together. Your family in Jesus joyously welcomes you to the Lord's table today to partake of the wondrous gifts of love present there from your Lord Jesus. After all, Jesus prayed for you, and it's right where he wants you to be. In the name of Jesus, amen.